Need motivation? Watch your top 10 with Believe Nation. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So let's get your motivation to a 10 and get you believing in you. Grab a snack and chew in today's lessons from a man who went from growing up poor in India, sometimes not having enough food to eat, and moving to America with $5 in his pocket to becoming a billionaire entrepreneur. He's Naveen Jain, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success, volume two. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, pursue crazy ideas. Seven years ago when I started saying, we are going to go to the moon and we're gonna mine for the resources and people say, that's a freaking crazy idea. And when someone tells you it's a crazy idea, that means you're on the right path. Because dreams so big that people think you're absolutely crazy. And when you tell them what you're going to do, and if they don't think it's a crazy idea, you're not thinking big enough. So think big. And when and the reason is, when someone tells you it is impossible, it becomes impossible for them, not for you. And the more people who tell you it's impossible, that means more people have taken themselves out of the solution. And now the field is yours to on yours only, mm. right? And that's just a different way of looking at it. So when I look at as an entrepreneur, I don't focus on what the world is. I focus on what the world can be. So don't look at the glass being half empty or half full. You focus on saying, is this glass worth filling? Do I want to fill this glass or not? Because if I do, does it really matter is half empty or half full? And if I don't, does it re do I really care is half empty or half full, right? And that to me is really starting to think about every time you see something and you say, what is possible? What if and imagine are the two amazing words in the English dictionary. So when I say, Louis, imagine. What happens is you, all your preconceptions go away and you're willing to open to anything that I'm willing to say for at least the next 30 seconds of imagining. Mm -hmm. And then you may come back and say, oh, that will never work. Uh -huh. But at least you're open for that time. Rule number two, question everything. I have no science background. And by the way, my first company was a computer background. When I started that, I didn't even see the computer in my life. So I have no computer science background. When I started a space company, I have no idea how rockets work, right? I have no idea of astronomy. I have no idea how orbits work. Mm -hmm. Is that I, I go and learn and then I surround myself with the smartest people and then I question them. Why can't we do it this way? And every time you question an expert, why can't we do it this way? And the first answer they always tell you is, it just won't work. And you say, tell me why it won't work. And they always say, do you know much about it? No, but why don't you explain <laughs> that to me then? And by the time they finish explaining, oh, it just might work. Right. <laughs> right. And that is the thing is, surround yourself with an expert and you keep questioning every single thing they are asking you to do. How did you get the self-confidence to know that you could go in and maybe not become a rocket scientist, yeah. but be able to be in a group, not be bamboozled by them, uh, be able to get them past their own limiting beliefs so that you could you know, build this extraordinary company or sure. environment? Sure. So I think it's just idea of bootstrapping. So bootstrapping is you learn a little bit and then you learn more from because you learned a little bit. So once you get the basic foundation and the basic vocabulary of a particular subject, then you start reading book and then you get a lot more knowledge. And that allows you to learn a little bit more about a science paper and you don't have to know a lot. And then I can go and today, every time I read a science paper, I don't understand 80% of it. Then I go ask my guys and say, hey, can you look at this science paper and explain that to me in real English? What is it they're trying to say? Right. And now tell me, what is it that we can learn from it that we can apply? Rule number three, enjoy the journey. Road to success is a long road. In fact, I don't even know this road ever leads to a destination. We all have to know that as long as we are enjoying what we are doing, it doesn't matter whether we reach our destination or not, because we are always having a time of our life. Think about it. What if you are not enjoying what you are doing? What if you actually reached the destination and you looked back and found, for what? Why did you spend all this time trying to get to this destination that wasn't worthwhile? So what I learned was, spend all your time doing things that you really enjoy. And most importantly, 
enjoy and celebrate the milestones along the road to success. Rule number four, follow your passion. So what is a success? Success is not about how much money you have in the bank. Success is simply about how many lives you've been able to impact positively. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, I tell our children all the time is that, you know, the best way you will ever know that you have become successful is the day you become humble. Because if you have an iota of arrogance left in you, that you're still trying to prove something to someone or yourself, that means you're not successful. Success comes from when you don't have to tell someone, you know, who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. You just be yourself. right? Right. And you go out and do things that you care about. And what is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you're willing to die for? And then you live for it. What if that was the, if you had everything in life, what would you do? And if you do that today, and that's how you constantly focus Mm. and find your passion to do things that can change the world. Rule number five, think like an entrepreneur. In today's world, the philanthropy is considered where you give the money to someone and if you don't give the money, you are a bad person. Somehow you don't care enough. And to me, philanthropy should never be about giving money. Philanthropy should be about solving a problem. So this lady came to me uh, saying, you know, we have done such a good job in our current homeless shelter. We really outgrown it and now we need to expand it and we have this capital need and we want you to donate to it. And I said, instead of asking for a donation, why don't you start to think about like a business? And I am a venture capitalist. And if you came to me saying that, give me this money that is gonna go out and do something with it, there are only two choices you're giving me. Either you're gonna fail in doing what you're doing, in that case, the money is wasted. And if you do succeed, you're gonna come back and ask me for more money. So how is that going to be a sustainable business model? And she said, what do you really mean? I say, ask yourself a question just like any other business. What is your product and who is your customer? She looked at me, all she wanted me to do is write a check <laughs> and not, not be interviewed. And she said, it's really simple. All I'm selling is the homeless shelter, the place in the homeless shelter, and my customers are my women who come there. And I say, young lady, you have a broken business model. And she said, why? I say, your customers don't pay you. Right. I said, they're not your customer, they are your users. And she said, how, would you, how else would you think about it? And I said, what if, just like a Facebook, the social networking is not their product. The people who use social networking is the product. You and I are the product, and their customer is the advertisers. In the same way, in a women's shelter, the women are the product, and local businesses are your customers. And the more products you have, the more you can cater to the local businesses. So why don't you go to local businesses and say, I have this amazing product. The women who are so driven that they would go out and do the things you want them to do. You will have a loyal employee, you will teach them the skills, and you will have these people working, and you'll be doing good for the society, and you'll have a loyal employee. And if you do that, the more people you have in your shelter, the higher the revenue you're going to have, and you'll be continuing to expand that. Mm-hmm. And just that thought process, she implemented, and suddenly now they're growing everywhere, right? She actually did it? She actually did it. Whoa, yeah. I did not yeah. think yeah, that was gonna that. be the punchline. Yeah, yeah. So my point is, this is how entrepreneurs really need to be thinking about, and I can give you several examples of that. The problem that is obvious to you may not necessarily be the solution that exists in that problem. Rule number six, be honest. Another lesson that I learned as I was growing up from my dad was value of honesty and integrity. These are the cornerstone of everything we do in our life. Each one of us has this conscience. It tells us what's right, what's wrong, and what we should do and what we should not do. Many of us, or some of us stop listening to this voice. Just remember, when your conscience tells you something not right, just don't do it. The value of honesty and integrity is not just about being honest to others, it's about being honest to yourself. It's easy to fool others, but it's very difficult to fool yourself. So just listen to your own voice and be truthful to yourself. Rule number seven, believe. What is it that people fight over? We, they, we fight over land, we fight over water, and we fight over energy. And if you look up, 
there is an abundance of land out there there is an abundance of water and all the comets and all the asteroids and you start to look and there is abundance of energy you know our you know our solar system even the planet earth even in our own galaxy we are a tiny pale blue dot in our own galaxy and there are trillions of these galaxies in this universe and then there could be trillions of universes in this multiverse so where is the scarcity the scarcity comes from in our mind because we believe it's not possible so we believe the only place we can live is this planet and that's why everything that we value today because they are scarce but what if we can create abundance of food we can create abundance of land we can create abundance of energy and we can create abundance of everything that we value and people still say well humans are just greedy it doesn't matter how much they have they will want more and then i remind them you know we are really not that bad people because when you look at air and you look at oxygen we have learned to live together we can all be in the same room and we never said hey louis you're taking my oxygen move away we don't because we inherently believe it is in abundance and that mindset if it's in abundance we don't value it and we don't fight over it Mm. and there is no doubt in my mind that we have access to these exponential technologies that can create these abundance of food abundance of water rule number 8 have intellectual curiosity the most important trait you can have in your children and in yourself is to have intellectual curiosity so the intellectual curiosity is what makes us who we are the day we stop being intellectually curious is the day we die and then we become zombies and you know so many zombies in this world sure. they have absolutely no interest in anything else so you've made a great analogy in the past which is don't worry about whether or not when you lead the horse to water yeah. it will drink focus on making the horse thirsty yes i know there's a lot of parents watching this how do you make your kids especially like thirsty for knowledge and i think that's really interesting is that you know most parents and the teachers think their job is to you know take them to the water and then hoping and pursuing them to hopefully they can drink the water our job as a parent should be is to make them thirsty and never take them to the water because once you make them thirsty they will find the water and the way you make them thirsty is by allowing them to be intellectually curious the minute you start to teach them how much fun it is to learn about something to be able to go out and do something with it and if you can start to show them that it is not the money that drives the society or it who they are rule number 9 focus the interesting thing about entrepreneurs is that they see opportunities where others see none while well, that sometimes can be very difficult because the grass is always greener on the other side we constantly see opportunities and most companies most entrepreneurs fail because of indigestion rather than starvation that means they are trying to do too many things at the same time rather than too few so find something that you're passionate about stick to it and provide focus and rule number 10 the last one before a very special bonus clip is change your thinking What is a mindset of um, abundance? So mindset of abundance is really clear. You do not think that anything is not possible or anything is scarce. The reason we find things scarce is because we think that what is being done is the only way of doing things, right? So for example, 50 years ago, one of the rarest thing was something called aluminum. it is plentiful abundance on earth but it's never in a pure form it comes in the form of bauxite it was extremely rare nobody could purify it until the technology came along called electrolysis and then aluminum become abundant we have the coke cans we throw away we use them for everything it was simply people found them to be rare because they thought in a certain way so when you start to think that everything that we value on earth earth is nothing but a tiny dot in the in the galaxy there is nothing that we fight over that we can't have abundance of whether it is a land whether it is water anything that you think whether it's called rare earth elements they are called rare earth elements they are not called rare moon elements they are not called <laughs> rare mars elements right anything that you find valuable scarce can be had in plentiful 
and you talk about education, you talk about healthcare, the reason they are scarce is because we continue to do the same things in the same way that has not changed and disrupted in the last 50 or 100 years. Now I've got a really special bonus clip from Naveen on how to be driven that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to actually taking action in your life or in your business. And if you're feeling bold, answer these questions in the comments below. Here we go. Question number one, what is your crazy idea? Number two, what do you question that others don't? And number three, how will you believe more in yourself and your ideas? So you've got a business called Moon Express, right? Moonshot. Mm -hmm. Moon Express or Moonshot? Moon Express. Moon Express. And um, you're literally taking people to the moon. Is this right? Well, so yeah. So our goal really is to create the multi-planetary society because after all, we're all living in the same spacecraft called planet Earth. And whether we destroy it ourselves or we get hit by some large asteroid, we'll all become dinosaurs. And that's definitely something we don't want to do. Right. So you're looking to, what, what gave you the inspiration to try to go to the moon though? Well, Was I, it? Yeah, so I really think a lot of the inspiration came from just growing up with a very humble background in India. We didn't have a lot of resources. We didn't have our days. We didn't have food to eat. We didn't have place to stay. And really looking up at the moon, it, gave, it was something about it that you could see and feel for a second that you are the richest man in the world because the richest man in the world cannot be looking at it any differently than you are. And it felt like you could be anybody you wanted to be. And to me, the going to the moon really was symbolic for me about what individuals and a small group of people are capable of doing. And so for me, it's obviously the, you know, going to the moon is an amazing business. So if I could rephrase John F. Kennedy, it will sound something like, we chose to go to the moon, not because it's easy, because it's a great business. And what makes it a great business is there are 16 quadrillion worth of minerals on the moon. What's really amazing about it is it is a planet, a celestial body that is almost like our eighth continent of the planet Earth. And once we can learn to live on the moon, and that is so close, and very same, similar types of problems as living on the Mars, we can next look at the whole space as our own backyard. We could be living on Europa and Titan and Mars and anywhere else. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word, this is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon, If you like this video and want more Naveen, check out the volume one top 10 rules we did on him. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Entrepreneurs never fail. Their ideas may or may not work. And you know what entrepreneurs do?